I'm Preston with Spratronics Learning Lab, and we're doing an experiment today to try to improve our turning with the yaw sensor. We recently posted our video of perfect turns using the yaw sensor, and we still stand by that, but there are always ways to make this more precise, more accurate, and more consistent. And that's the name of the game, to score big numbers in first LEGO League robot game, is to be consistent. This will help us across all of our robotics pro projects, and especially in first LEGO League. Last week, we made a yaw turn, number or text degrees, negative 180 to 179. This way, we can just drop in our my block and our robot will turn every single time. We did note that whenever it was making those turns, it was off by about two or three degrees, which if you're doing just a short maze or a couple of turns, that's not a big deal. But if your robot is going all over the table, we wanna get this as accurate as possible. So we came up with a lesson that is a science project. We're gonna follow the scientific method of having a problem. We're having, going to make a hypothesis. We're gonna research it a little bit. We're gonna collect data and we're gonna come up with a conclusion. And how we use that conclusion is going to make us better at the first LEGO League robot game. Our hypothesis or our problem, our problem is that our yaw turns are off by just a little bit. And our hypothesis for that is, maybe it's because we're going too fast, maybe we can fix that by coming up with a small, an angle change, but our problem is that our yaw angles are off by just a little bit. What we're going to do is I'm starting with this basic program, and what I want to do is I want to make some changes to it. The data we're gonna collect is we are going to set our power to 20%, 30%, 40%, and 50%, and try to make a perfect 90 degree turn each time. We're gonna do five trials of this, and we're gonna come up with the average of where did we actually end up on average, and that'll tell us what offset. Do we need to add some degrees to this project, or do we need to subtract some degrees to this project? Our first challenge we have with this though, I see if I'm gonna change speed, I'm gonna have to change it in four different spots. I think it's a great idea to create a variable that your team can use that is just setting your robot power or your turn speed. So let's make a variable called turn speed. And we want to set that turn speed at the very beginning of our program. So we are going to set turn speed, and I want to set it to 20%, or to 20, because that's what I have right here. So now I'm going to go through, and anywhere I see 20 in here, I'm going to actually use this variable. So 20 can become turn speed, 20 become, can become turn speed. I have these negatives here. So what I need to do is I need to make a multiplication operator and I can take my turn speed and I'm gonna multiply it by negative one and that's going to give it a negative value. We want that negative value because we need one wheel to be going in reverse and the wheel that is going in reverse is the direction our robot is going to turn. So for this first one, this is our left turn section, our left turn the left wheel needs to be going in reverse, so our robot turns left. And then on this bottom one, the right wheel needs to be negative, so the right wheel needs to go backwards. And before we do any testing, let's just see if this works. So I have my program set up, and I want to just yaw turn 90 degrees. I need to hit play and make sure my robot still turns about 90 degrees. Great, that looks good. The next thing I want is I need our robot. I don't want to have to go up here to the yaw sensor, which is 96 right now, so that's pretty far off of what I wanted it to be, which was 90 degrees. We want it to display it directly on our hub. And so we're going to do right and sensors yaw angle. And I like to actually duplicate that and maybe even instead of duplicating it, I'm gonna just make a forever loop. And so once my program starts, I want my hub to constantly display the yaw angle. So I can push play on it. 
my robot turns. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I didn't do a forever loop. That's why that didn't work. We put the forever loop in here. And now we tell our robot to turn 90 degrees and just forever display that yaw angle. So we're at 95 right now. If I push play again, it makes that turn again and again ends up at 95. We have this program all set up, so we are ready to start doing our experiment. My first experiment is going to be to have power set to 20%, target angle of 90. I want to do it five times and see the average. So our turn speed is set to 20% power. We are going to be turning 90 degrees to the right. Let's push play and we'll do this five times. My first one, it ended up being 95. Let's run it again. I'm looking at my hub, it says 95 again. Let's run this three more times. Trial number three, stopped at 94, make a note of that. Run it again. Trial number four, stopped at 95. And our final trial, trial number five, stops at 95 again. And I am doing this on my unit circle, but I'm not using the lines on my unit circle. It's just helping me to make sure that my robot stays in the middle of the paper as it turns and to stay lined up on the camera. Our average right there is 95. So we need an offset of negative five for that to be perfect. Let's increase the power to 30% and see if this changes the offset required. I'm only gonna have to change my turn speed to 30 and now the rest of my code can all stay the same. I'm turning 90 degrees. Let's send it, we're at 30% power, trial number one. And we are at a yaw angle of 99. Let's do this four more times. That one looks like it's 98. one at 99. Let's do trial number four. Ended at 99. Let's do another one, trial number five. Ended at 99 as well. Our offset is gonna be even greater. 99, 98, 99, 99, 99. You know, it's 98.8, but I'm gonna 99. Our offset required for this one is a negative nine offset. Let's bump the power to 40. What do you think is going to happen? So the power at 40 makes the turn. It's at 102. It's becoming some pretty large offsets that are going to be needed. We're 14 degrees off our turn. That's not even a good turn with this high of speed. 102 again. That one's 103. I think we're moving fast enough where we might be moving my piece of paper, so I'm going to just get the paper out of here. Let's do another trial, trial number four. 101. Trial number four. And our average, I'll actually calculate that average this time, 104 plus 102, plus 103, plus 101, 
plus 102. This is 512. We did five trials. 102.4 down to 102. That's an offset of negative 12. Now, what are we going to do with this offset? We are going to actually add that to our wait until. So for right turns, number of text, I think 20 degrees for turn speed is going to be the best to be the most accurate. And where it says number or text, we're going to add an operator in there. And I see that I need to subtract five degrees every time. So I'm going to do number or text minus five degrees and drop that back in there. So now my program is going to turn to the right until the desired angle is about five degrees away from where we want to stop. So I've changed my turn speed. Let's send this program and see what we end up with with an offset of five. And that's a 90 degree turn right there. Let's try it again. 90 degrees. So we've applied this offset to a 20 degree turn and we are getting great turns. Now we're ready to do the whole experiment again, but to turn negative 90 degrees. This first left turn went negative 95 degrees. So our actual angle was negative 95. And let's run this test four more times. Got a negative 95 again. Trial number three, negative 95. Trial number four, negative 95. And this is at that 20% power. And our fifth trial, negative 96. Again, we could calculate that average. Looks like negative 95 is a good spot to be at. And so if I take my target angle minus my average, I get a positive five. And so let's jump into our spike program. And earlier I had a negative five as my offset required. Now I have a plus five as my offset required because I'm taking my target angle and subtracting from it my average angle and I get an offset required of plus five. So if we go into our spike program, here where our left turn is, where our left wheel starts off negative, we need to change this wait until yaw angle is less than number or text. When we were subtracting five, we did number or text minus five. We're now going to do number or text plus five. So we get an operator. And let's go ahead and load this operator up with a number or text plus five. And let's test this out. Let's send this new offset to our robot. Starts off at zero degrees, makes our turn, and it ends up at negative 90 degrees. So it looks like this offset is gonna work well. You can go through and test these other power levels and pick the power level that you plan to use your robot at. I'm gonna stick at 20% for my turn speed because I have my offsets already loaded in for that. We've made a lot of progress with our first LEGO League robot. We learned how to make turns using the My Blocks and measuring with that yaw sensor. Then we figured out how to make an offset so that our yaw turns end up at the exact degree we want every single time. You're gonna want to do this with your first LEGO League robot or your own robot at home because your robot might be built different than mine. I used a simple driving base my motors have about three years worth of use on them. Your results will probably be different than mine. We used the scientific method to come up with an offset for turning left and for turning right. I want you to let me know in the comments, what speed or power are you using for your motors and what offset did you have to put in in order to have a successful turn? You can keep this scientific method process going for lots of other things as well in regards to turns. Maybe you want to check out the more movement block that says set motors to brake or hold position or coast at stop. 
and see how that affects your turns. You could even try this by deciding to use the more movement block of set movement acceleration to medium, low, or high, and test out how setting acceleration will affect your robot's offset and turn. Find the best setup that works for your robot that might be built differently than mine, that might have a different weight on it, it might turn a little bit differently, but you should absolutely test this out on your own robot and come up with your own offset that works for your robot. Be sure to like and subscribe Sprattronics Learning Lab for more great first LEGO League videos. Thank you.